What's up everybody, B Mason here. Today we are making a hybrid. Yes, we're making a hybrid. We're making a hybrid. Let's go. So I'm not gonna do a lot of talking and take you guys all around the world today. You guys know by now you're tuned into the channel. You're here to see me build cool stuff, build stuff in general, learn how to build stuff. Whatever the case may be, you're here, you're looking, you're watching, so we finna build. Uh, a little, little quick story. Today we're gonna be building a Hanuma, Hanuma, Han, Hanuma, Hanuma, Hanuma. I'm gonna mess this up, but we building Hanuma. <laughs> we're building a, a hybrid, a TW737U19. Now, I took a lot of clubs, a lot of old clubs that I had laying around the house, and I traded them in, and I had a little credit. And when I was walking out the door, I say, I don't, I don't have a hybrid in my bag. Maybe I want a hybrid. I always, you know, I built a lot of hybrids for people, but I never had a hybrid in my bag. So I was like, let's build a hybrid. Let's make a video. So I went and I was looking around and I ran across this. And since I don't normally play hybrids, I picked this solely off the reviews and how it looked at a dress. And the first thing I noticed is that that thing looks pretty sexy. It didn't look like your normal hybrid. It's like a mini five wood. So I was like, let me give it a try. So I got, I got it. It had a real weak shaft on it. The shaft was like 60 grams. It was an R flex. Definitely not gonna work for me. So what I did was I went and got tied up. Oh, I guess I could take it out the plastic. I call it the green machine. I got the Audela NV85 HBS. So you know, you guys don't know what that means. 85 normally means the weight, but most of the time it's not the weight. It could be like 82, 83, 86, uh, but it's something with an eight in front of it. The HB is for hybrid and the S stands for stiff. So if I'm gonna play a hybrid, I need something like this for my swing speed. Brand new, got it from the Gauss Works. And uh, yeah, we're gonna put this green machine in that head. So we already removed, we, I'm saying we like I got a team of people. It's only me. I already removed, <laughs> I already removed the head from the uh, old shaft and it's clean and ready to go. I might spray it out one more time, but I think it's good to go. So the first thing I need to do is this head has to be able to fit in here, which right now is a very tight fit because this tip has not been prepped. So the first thing we're gonna do, gonna come over here to this machine. Da -da -da -da. We're gonna prep this tip. Then once we get this tip in here, we're gonna do what I call a dry fitting uh, I played around and I think my numbers are gonna land somewhere around uh, maybe like a D2 or a D3 swing weight. And I definitely wanna stay in the stiff flex. So I'm gonna walk you guys through how I do all that. Right now this raw shaft is... 42 inches raw, raw shaft, 42 inches. So yeah, we're gonna, uh, man, I didn't. I need to check this shaft. I'm gonna pull out some paperwork. We're gonna check to see if this thing can be tipped or not, uh, or if it's just butt trim only. Stand by. All right, I'm back. So, to figure that out, you can easily figure that out. You can look it up on the internet. I normally just go straight to the Golf Works website. You can go down to where it says Trim Code, and this is a IR1. So you're like, okay, that's cool. What does IR1 mean? Well, you click Trim Instructions, and when you go down to IR1, IR1, it says Butt Trim Only. So you cannot tip this to so-called make it stiffer. You can only butt trim it only. So we'll prep the tip dry fit it, get it down to the plan length that I like, probably 40 or 40.5 or something like that, maybe 41, I'm not sure. 
But once we get it down to what I like, then we will uh, start putting it together. So like I said, the first thing we need to do, we're gonna prep the tip. Uh, I normally start by taking like an inch of this material off just a little bit. Let's get some of this stuff out the way. We don't wanna, wanna make a dangerous situation here. And we need to change this belt. This belt is a linen belt. I use this to turn down ferrules. So if we're not turning down ferrule, we're prepping the tip. I'll get my other belt. This is a silicone carbide. It's just 400 grit. Definitely won't tie the material You don't want something too hard. Don't go putting no 80 grit on here, man. You put 80 grit on here, it's gonna be all bad. So don't do that. You gotta get something that's real light that's gonna take the, uh, the material off. Like I say, once again, don't go putting 80 grit on here. You can get one of these little combination sanders. You can get them cheap or you can get them expensive. Preferably you want something that's spinning at like 1700 RPM SS. Mine's spin at uh, 35. So I've been doing this a while, so I can do that. But if you're gonna get one of these, get one that's spin at 17, 1750 RPM SS. If it's not, it could get away from you real quick. And you don't want that. All right. So let's take off an inch of this. Let's take off an inch. Let's go up an inch, but only take off just a little bit of material. Show you what a prep tip look like. Perfect. Tell you, man, gotta be careful with that uh 3400 RPM message. That baby spins and they just rip the material off of there. So definitely be careful when you do it if you're gonna go that route. Bam. Now we on. Perfect. And it's snug. It's not even coming out tight, just like you want it. That way when you put that epoxy on there, stick, stick to it. You want that, you want that epoxy to stick. I use 24 hour epoxy too, but we'll talk about that later. So this is it. A lot of times I like to check to make sure this is going all the way to the bottom too. So what I would do is I would take whatever I got, a screw, a screwdriver, a T, whatever. I stick it in the bottom of there like that. I wait till I hit the bottom. Then I would compare it to where I'm at. And that is about how far I want to go down. This, this shaft should come up to right here. Here, let me do, let me get closer so y'all can see that. Let me get a flashlight. The tip shows, the tip shows how right here where my fingernail is at shows how far the T went in the head. And you can see I prepped the tip pretty much that far now. So when I put this in, when I put the head on there, it should basically come down the same distance. So I put this on, bam. Nice tight fit. Everything looks good. You see that right there? Don't worry about that. The ferrule is gonna cover it up. And that's why the ferrule is a decorative piece. It makes everything nice and pretty once it's all said and done. So, Okay, now we're gonna move to the next part, which is where I figure out the stiffness or where I can make it the exact stiff stiffness that I want. We do a lot of measuring and we do a lot of weighing on this side of the bench. So this right here is my CPM machine. It's my frequency analyzer. It helps me figure out the exact stiffness and I'm able to, you know, make different changes uh, to make it stiffer or even just to figure out if it's the right stiffness. Let me clean up for a second. Got stuff everywhere. Keep your workstation clean. You won't have to worry about this. All right, now we're good. All right, everybody, now that we got our head onto the shaft, it's on here pretty good. Like it's not going anywhere. So a lot of times when I run this through the CPM machine, 
I have to put like fishing line on here to like make this connection between this dry fit between the shaft and the head more stable so the head doesn't shake when I twang, that's what they call it, twang, when I twang it in the CPM. So uh, the length of this is gonna be, I'm gonna play it at 41. Uh, that's what I feel comfortable playing that. Uh, the standard is you normally wanna play your hybrid uh, 0.75 over whatever the equivalent iron is, 19 degree. So this would be a three iron. Uh, so my three iron would play uh, 0.75 over my three iron would put me at about 40.75. So uh, I feel comfortable playing this at about 41. No, I'm not gonna do 41. I'm gonna keep it standard. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a 40 and a half. I mean 40 point, I'm gonna keep it standard. I'm gonna do 40.75. So I'm not gonna do 41. I'm gonna play this at 40.75. Let me look at that first. <laughs> Since this is my club, it, it's gotta be perfect. So if I'm gripping it right where I marked it at, yeah, that fit good. 40.75 it is. So I marked it with the Sharpie. I'm gonna, put it in, I'm gonna put it in my CPM machine. Hopefully I'm gonna still be in the still range. If not, we're gonna have an issue. Cause I'm, they say only butt trim this, but if, if we not in the still range, I'm gonna have to tip trim it. Uh, all right, we're gonna run the numbers on it. Just the laser right here. You adjust the laser so it hit the shaft. You twang it. 276 CPMs. Do it again. 276 CPMs. A lot of times I like to do it like three times. So. 276 CPMs at 40.75 length. So we come over here to our chart. Chart right here. We go to 276 CPMs. We're gonna cross that over with 40.75. That pretty much put us right at a 5.5 so we still but we on the low end of stiff and I can make this stiffer but I feel comfortable playing this at a 5.5 I can play this at a 5.5 so uh, yeah we should be good we should be good to go the stiff range goes from 5.5 to 6.4 before you get into the extra stiff so and the extra, extra still goes from 6.5 to 7.4 when you uh, when you measure it out on the CPM machine. So, so 5.5, the next step we need to do is cut this. So let's do that. It's a little rough around the edge, but I take a filer and I just Go up on it like that. You just clean it off real quick. Yep, that's it. Now, go back, measure. Forty point seven five. Come back, put it on CPM machine. Right thing.
276. This is the official playing length of this hybrid. Now we're gonna move to the next step. This step is called spining and flowing. So, the first thing I do is every shaft has a spine and it's up to me to put it in what's called the spine finder. We'll let about an inch hang off and then we put a few, put a piece of tape on here so we know where to make our marks when we find the spine. All right, this thing right here is a wheel. It has ball bearings in it, so it's able to spin. And we put this on the shaft. Now graphite has a tendency to break, so you can't pull it down real hard on this. But as you pull this, this thing is gonna naturally roll to the spine. More expensive shafts are going to have spines that are harder to find. And a lot of times you can feel the spine too. So our goal is to spin this. And wherever it lines back up at, that's where the spine is. And a lot of times that's not logo up. All right, so now that we know exactly where the shaft keeps turning to on its own, We'll take a sharpie and we'll write, we'll draw a line across that, that mark. Now, that's not the spine yet, folks. What you do is you take this and you turn it 180 degrees. Then you mark it. Now, like I told you guys, sometimes the spine, if you get a good shaft, the logo up will be the spine. This just so happens that it's pretty close to logo up as the spine. All right, now, now that we know what the spine is, we want to take this other mark, the first mark that we made, and just like cross it out so we don't get confused. Now. It's two schools of thought here. And this is the way I do mine. This is this the poor man version, SST pure anyway. So you're gonna find several different people out there who's gonna say it's done five different ways. This is the way I do mine. I had success this way. I actually seen changes and had some good results. So I'm gonna keep doing it like that. Now, if you wanna go for more accuracy, you want this spine facing the target. So in the nine o'clock position, you wanna install this in the head in the nine o'clock position. If you want more distance, you turn around and you install this spine facing the back of the club head, club head in the three o'clock position. That supposedly will give you more diff distance. So accuracy nine o'clock, distance three o'clock. Uh, I'm gonna make a video on, I'm gonna make a later video that go into details on spining and uh, finding the spine and flow in a club. But since I'm just, since this video is only about putting together a hybrid, I'm gonna keep going. You got to check back in for that video. All right, so the shaft been cut is 40.75 in plain length. We have found the spine. Now we're gonna flow the club. And flowing the club is basically where I put a laser on the edge of this club, and we're looking for flat line oscillation. That's when that club is going straight back and forth. And now that we know where the spine is, let's install, uh, we'll install this in the plane position, and we'll see if we get a flat line oscillation. All right, all right. I got weights that can go on here. So a lot of times I try to get my scale and come close to the weight 
of the club head as possible when I'm putting my laser on it. So, turn this on. This hybrid club head is 240 grams. This weight as it stands right now is, I mean this laser as it stands right now is 206 grams. So, what I'll do is I'll take some weights. Weights are 15 grams, so I'll take two of these. One, two, three, put them on there. 238 grams, so that's close enough. Now, I'll take this laser, tighten it down, take the laser, turn it on. I don't wanna shine it, I don't wanna shine it in my camera, but as you can see, that's the laser on the edge right there. So, Let's put this as if we were swinging this way. So left and right, we're gonna put the spine facing the target. We're just gonna lock it down in our CPM machine to do this. I'm gonna show you the difference. All right, so. I'm gonna show you where we're at right now. You have to do this in micro steps too. So, let me flip this around. So there go our laser. If we twing, if we twang this left or right. As you can see, that thing is pretty crazy right now. So we're gonna have to do some spinning and some adjustments to find the actual float the flow this club properly so we're gonna make micro moves all right after a little mi after quite a few micro moves i think we're good we're gonna twang it now that's a now that's a big difference from what we saw earlier earlier it was like Doing like that, doing like that, doing all like that. Now we are in a straight line. So let me fix my camera. I kept it rolling just so y'all know, like, I ain't doing no camera trickery or nothing like that. Like, this is real club making, S-H-I-T, man. <laughs> it's real club making stuff. I spin it around so y'all can see like this, for real. So, let's spin my camera around. All right. So, now that we're in a straight line, I want to install this shaft just like this. So, uh i'll take new tape i like to use different kind of different color masking tape that way i'm always like on top of what i'm doing so this time we're gonna take some orange tape we're gonna put it on here we're gonna make a new mark our mark now is this straight line across the top is how we want to install this shaft. So we'll make a line across the top right here. Straight down the middle. This is why I never do spining without flowing. Because as you can see now, this at first that logo is right on top. But now that logo is off to the side. 
the spining got us close, but the flowing and the flat line oscillation pinpointed us exactly to where we need to install this club. So, just so you know, a lot of club builders not gonna do this. Uh, shafts most of the time are good enough, especially steel, are good enough to not have to be spined and flowed. But that's what makes getting your stuff done from like a club builder versus off the shelf a little different. We take a little more time to make it just right and make them just how you want it to be. This is not a sales pitch because I do more restoring than I do building. It's just when I restore, I build the hell out of them. I overbuild. So, you know, this is not necessary but I would much rather play a club with a shaft that when I know I'm loading it and I'm coming through, it's coming down in a straight line versus wobbling <laughs> on the way down. That could be the difference between a, a clean strike and one that veers off to the left. If you play tournament golf, I would much rather have my clubs SST peer or, or peered or spined and flowed if you can if you don't want to afford to do that can't afford to do that or just don't want to spend the money to i would at least rather have them spined and flowed than nothing at all so that's my take on that i ain't gonna talk too long about it i do it with all my clothes that i build uh it's just what i do i rather have it than not have it and that's all i gotta say about it i'll go into a more detailed video about you know how you do it a lot of close-ups that way you guys get a better point but that's it for now we got our mark and we ready to move on so that's what we're gonna do well i know y'all gonna ask me so i figured i'd show it to you now the way i installed this shaft is this the line this the mark that i made this way i was going flat line oscillation left to right and once i figured once i find a square on this head that square from my side angle. I want this to go in with this line straight up and down. And that's how I would install this. So, I'm gonna clean up for a second, get some of this stuff out of my way, then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I cleaned everything up. The next step is a uh, swing weight. So, I played my irons at like a D4, Play my woods at like a D, D1, D2. So I want this to be around a D2 or a D3. So I like the swing, with the swing with it. Put the head on the club. Put it on, put it on the scale. As you can see, this would not be a correct swing weight right now because I don't have a grip. So what I do is I just sit the grip right on top. Put a small little piece of tape there. To hold it that tape does not add weight for real and then I go looking for the swing weight like a D three and a half every two grams that's a swing weight point so I'm at a D I want to be at a D2 I'm at a D three and a half so basically I need two grams which for two grams I don't even know if it's worth it I could just play this at a D three and a half and be fine. I'm gonna just play it like this. So I actually, this club is actually good to go right now. So we don't have to do anything as far as adjusting weight. So we got the head on, we dry fit it, we spine and float. We did the we find it flow, we swing weight it. We're gonna put a, time to put a ferrule on. I'll show you how to do my ferrules. I'm gonna go with my basic ferrule. We need a 370. 370, where are you? Bam. So we're gonna go with the basic black ferrule. It'll look like that. So as you can see, the ferrule is not all the way on there yet. And there's two things I do. I have what's called a ferrule block somewhere. Great, ferrule block. And what I do is I take this 
take this barrel, I sit it on here, and then I push it down onto the block as far as it'll go. Then I try to just use the head and push it on. Better yet, let me show you another way to do it too. I like to just go ahead and put epoxy on this thing so this barrel, when it get hot from being in your car and not taking care of your clubs, <laughs> it don't slide up and down the shell. So now that we know we got the right ferro, let's whip up some epoxy. So we finna glue this thing together, baby. I'm real big on recycling. I use this shipping packing paper to mix up my epoxy on. So I basically get it. Why y'all ain't tipping that right here? I basically get it, fold it in half. I tape it to my work state, my work desk. Work, I tape it to my work bench. <laughs> That's the real name for it, work bench. Tape it to my work bench. Now write down the date and time, the day, the 20th, 220. 20. Whoa, 22020. It'll never be a 22020 ever again. Not in, this, not in your lifetime. But if YouTube's still around and somebody out there and they playing golf on the moon and you're trying to figure out how to get some clubs, you can be like, man, I watched a YouTube video from 20, from 22020. And you hooked me up, B Mason. Uh, it's uh, 1055. So that let me know this club won't be ready till around 11 p.m. tomorrow night. So, get the epoxy. I'll show y'all what I'm using too. I know y'all wanna see it. I hate getting epoxy on my hand, so I got gloves. I always got gloves. For me to be a club build, I show sure hate getting stuff on my hand, so. Look, let me show you what I got. I used the 24 hour epoxy from Golf Works. Uh, never had an issue out of it. Very good stuff. But I also use glass shafting beads. I mean, this stuff is great because it centers the shaft. It makes that epoxy expand more. This is one to one. So what I like to do is I, I make one straight line then I take this one, part B, and I put it on top of that line. I take the glass shafting beads. You don't need a lot of this. This is usually absolutely just a little of this stuff. And I put it on top of that. And I take a pop scissor stick. And I mix this stuff up. It don't take long. You're just waiting on it to kind of thicken up a little bit. It can't be super, it can't be super uh, liquefied. I guess it's a good word to use. It has to be, it has to be kind of thick like. So now I get my heat gun ready because I use a heat gun for this. Now what happens is before I get the heat gun on, you're not gonna be able to hear me. So let me tell you what I do. I take this ferro, I take a little of the epoxy, Put it on the inside. I put it on here and I push it down as far as it can go. Then I take this heat gun and I work it around the edge like this. I just work, 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 get it soft. Once it gets soft, I take the head and push it on the rest of the way. That's how I put my ferros on. Never had an issue out of it. Nobody really taught me to do it like that. I just started doing it that way on my own. It's my way. It worked for me. It worked for the people I build clubs for. So I'll continue to do it. It also keeps the darn ferrules from coming off. So I slide it on. As you can see, it's on. I take the head. Push it down on there. I get this heat gun. I 
Work it around like that. Get it soft. Then I just take this, push it down. Bam. Just like that. Feral. All the way down. If you want to be for certain, you can take it, tap it on the concrete. Bam. Now that that's 100% on, I take this, I take the rest of it, and I put it on the shelf. I can turn this off now. Don't need it no more. So now I take this and put it on the shelf. Then I take it and I take this shaft and I just work it around like that. Now what happens and I what happens a lot and I hate this and this is my workaround to fix it is that as you spin it around all the epoxy is working down to the bottom right here between the ferrule and the, the tip of the, the club head so what i do is i take a glue so you don't want too much epoxy too much epoxy is a bad thing you want just enough to hold that head so what i do is i take this uh I take this blue paper towel and I go in between the gap right there and I get all that excess out because I don't need that. Like I say, one more thing that I do that other club makers probably don't do, it's just, it's just a tedious thing that I don't like because that epoxy can come out and get on the edge of your shaft and stuff like I mean get on the edge of your club head and you don't want that especially because I use shafting beads so it is span so my goal is to get all the the extra out before I sit this club properly so now that I got the extra out I push it on the shaft the rest of the way and remember don't forget to install this with the line up once you squat a club. So I like to get in here, hold my hand up against it, squat that club. That is square. When you're squaring these woods, I always look at the bottom line, the bottom scoring mark. And then install this shaft with the line up. And that's it for now. So I still see some stuff I need to clean up. Nope. Can't let it go out like that. Let me wipe a little more of this excess off. I need to send pretty. All right. Line it up with the scoring mark again. Remember the bottom scoring mark. That square, find it. There it go. Push that up. Put the line straight up. Bam. Double check. Bam, we good. Now, I take one last paper towel. Wipe that down. And then I put a piece of tape on it, like that, hold it in place, and then I move it over to my drying rack so it can dry. All right, you guys, that's it for day one. Day two, uh, the epoxy will be dry. 
We're going to turn the ferro down. We're going to clean the ferro up. We're going to clean the club up. And we're going to install the grip. And we'll be done. Uh, this stuff takes 24 hours to dry. So the next time I see you, I have on different clothes. Like now. All right, everybody. What's up? Welcome back. B Mason here. Look, the shaft is dry. Uh, we are almost done and ready to hit this baby. Uh, all we got to do, turn down the ferrule. After we turn down the ferrule, we're going to put a grip on it. We're going to be done. So, the way I turn down the ferrule is, I have, I go back to my uh, combination sander here. I take this belt off and I put on what's called a linen belt. Now, with the linen belt, now with the linen belt, I wouldn't necessarily like advise a linen belt to everybody. Like if you're gonna use a linen belt, you kind of want to have a belt sander that runs at a 1750 RPM S's. But uh, me, my, my belt sander runs at 34, which is fine because I have turned so many ferrules down with this linen belt that I feel comfortable uh, doing it. I know how much pressure to add, but uh, this linen belt will remove material from that uh, ferro very quickly. All right, so if you're gonna use it on a faster spinning sander, then uh, just you can't apply that much pressure. You gotta be very delicate in the way that you apply pressure. Also, another thing that helps is if you have a, I don't know the name of this mount right here, but this mount, this mount, you can get it from Golf Works. Uh, it holds the shaft on here, like like so. So you can just work it up against it. It also helps you apply just the right amount of uh, pressure. So all these things are important. Yeah. All these things are important because uh, you just kind of need them, you know what I'm saying, to, to get the job done. All right, so I'm gonna turn this ferro down. Somebody always told me a good sign of a club maker is how smooth the ferros are. We got quite a bit of material hanging off. This ferro is a little bigger than the hosel. So uh, we're just gonna start turning it down. I'm gonna pull you guys in for a close up. So just so you know, I like to push this thing up on here like that. And once it's rolling, I like to pull the club to me. The belt spin it down. I wanna spin with the belt. That kind of controls how much material you're coming off. So uh, let's do that. done. I'm happy with the way that turned out. Now, what I like to do is I like to clean this up. It's a smooth transition from the hosel to the ferro. So now, I like to take some acetone and clean it up. Alright, so we turned the ferro down. Everything looks nice and pretty at this point. The only thing I like to do now is I like to take some acetone. Acetone right here. You can buy this at your local Home Depot. Lowe's, wherever you at, your local hardware store. And I like to take the blue paper towel, tear it in half, fold it, fold it in half, and then I like to open up the acetone. Be careful around acetone. It is flammable, it is dangerous, it is all that stuff. No need to really wear a mask. We're not gonna have it on that long. Some people use gloves, some people don't. I got golf club makers hands at this point, so I don't even need no gloves. <laughs> so you take the acetone, and you, what you do is you just turn the ferrule on it, like that. Just turn the ferrule. I like to get it really wet, 
I, I found that the wetter I get it, the more it shines. So I like to get it really wet. Once I get it really wet, I do one solid turn on it, like that. I don't touch it no more. That's it. So I'm gonna show you a close up of that. So now that we're done with that, only thing left to do is put our grip on. I'm really particular about my grips. I do three three pieces of build up tape underneath. I do one at four inches, another one at six inches, and one that's full. That's just how I build. I try to build the lower hand up just a little bit. And you know, different people do it different ways. Some people just do one single one single piece of tape up under the bottom. Some people do like some people like bubble watching do 10 and 12 numbers like that. Some people don't do any. Some people just put the grip on as is and they don't even use tape. I think Zach Johnson do that. He just don't even use tape. So it's all about what you like. I got kind of like a modular station whenever I need to do grips. All I have to do is kind of like put the tray on, put the tray right here. Get my stuff down. I don't use a solvent. I use a odorless mineral spirit. That's what I use. So I don't use like the grip solvent. This is what I use, odorless mineral spirit. I bought this when I started building clubs and I'm still using it because I just keep recycling whatever I don't. So it feeds down through the tube, go back in here, I recycle it. So I've been recycling this stuff for a long time. All right, I got my grip here. Let's grip a club. Put this club in the vise. Make sure it's square, the most important part of all of this. Make sure that thing is right where you want it. It need to be nice and square. Look at the bottom groove, look at the bottom scoring line. That's where you're gonna see if it's square or not. Shoot back, shoot back at me. I don't like that. So like I tell y'all, I do four, six, and four. The way I find out where I need to start the tape at, cause I started from the bottom, is I get a mark using the grip. So I put a little piece of masking tape right there. I take my grip tape, I go four inches, Put that on there. Now cut it off. That's my four. Then I go six inches. Peel that off. basically building up the lower hand on so it's almost like a, a taperless not all the way taperless but close enough and then I do a full grip I mean a full piece of tape Straight. I put that one on there Bottom. 
push it in the back of it. I take the basking tape off. That was a guide. I take that off. And then I lube this up really good. <laughs> I put solvent on the tape. A lot of it. And then I put solvent inside the grip as well. With these multi-compound grips, I probably use more solvent than I sh probably should, but man, these things are not the easiest to get on sometimes. So I try to make sure I got enough juice in there. You know what I'm saying? Gotta have that juice in there. I installed my grip's logo down. I don't like to look at the logo. Then once I got it juiced up, I work it on there, get it going, and I just push it up. And just like that, we on. And we done. That look good. Make sure it's lined up. How you like it? Take it out the vise. Three taps. You can do that on concrete too. Three taps on concrete. That's it. Think of beauty. This is now a, it's a hybrid. A Aldola 85 gram hybrid steel shaft multi-compound, MCC multi-compound grip. Hunma TW 737 Utility U9 U19. Put it on here, double check the swing weight. Swing weight D3. This is a low ball monster. I'm glad you guys tuned in, man. Hey. He created a monster. <laughs> That's P, man. Go follow us on Draws and Fades, man. <laughs> On our YouTube page, we got a podcast, man. Draws and Fades. You can also find us. You can find us on Apple Music, Spotify, Draws and Fades, D R A W S and Fades, F A D E S. We got a podcast, man. Y'all check it out. But this club is done. Uh, it's ready to go be hit. What you think about this club, P? It's a thing of beauty. I was checking it out earlier. It's stiff, just how I like it. Yeah, man. This thing is gonna be a low ball. Monster. I might, I'm, y'all check my Instagram, man, uh, built by B Mason. I'm probably gonna put a video, um, a quick little video of me hitting it for the first time. Uh, I'm glad y'all tuned in, checked out the video. If y'all watched this all the way to the end, thank you. If you fast forward it to your favorite parts, thank you. If you like and subscribe, thank you even more. I'm gonna keep doing videos like this, man. Y'all tell me what y'all think. What can I improve upon? What do you want to see more of? Did I not get a close-up or something you wanted to see? Y'all comment below if this was informative to you. Do you feel like you can go out and build your own club now? I want to know all that. Uh, let's keep it interactive. I can't wait to hit this. It's going to be this going to be good. All right. I'm going to call it. What we name it? We can name this Hercules or the Incredible Hulk. Green boy, money green. What that? What that drink they used to make when they had the hypnotic and the Incredible Hulk? It's the Incredible oh, Hulk right man, here. That, that money green. Nah, this that, that money. That, yeah. That's like uh, it's the, Matt Kuchar. Matt Kuchar boy, him and his hybrid, he man. lethal with it. Hey, this the Cash Club. We gonna call this the Cash Club, man. Who you got? They gonna like what you got right there? This the Cash Club. Hey, they even that's money. And I bought this used, man. This head was like under thirty dollars, man. I even That's got your, your secret bars. The, yeah, one of my throw me that head code right there. I even got the head code with oh you'll see it. It's a hum hun ball right there. Right there. I even got they even they even, I even got the head cover with it. The head cover pretty much new. The thing's sexy, y'all. Look at that. That's gonna look good in the bag. Hey man. Built by B Mason, man. Y'all holler at me. If y'all want something built, man, hit me up. I'm always building stuff. I ain't just building stuff for myself. Um, I got a couple of jobs in the work right now. So, y'all want something? Y'all got questions or whatever? 
if you want to share some knowledge with me, and maybe you saw me do something you ain't like, maybe you want me to improve upon it, hit me up. Let's talk about it. All right. Peace.